Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be going over braking distances and I'm going to explain to you an equation that you can use to determine if a car can brake well or not. Now that equation is the distance to stop a vehicle is equal to one half times the initial velocity of the vehicle squared divided by the acceleration or in this case deceleration because we're slowing the vehicle down. So the common use uh, in English units is 60 miles per hour to zero miles per hour. You'll probably see this um, in Motor Trend or Car and Driver or uh, Inside Line. They'll give you stats saying this car breaks from 60 miles per hour to zero miles per hour in so many feet. Well, let's look at and see how many feet it would take for one G of deceleration. That is the equivalent force of gravity uh, on the car in order to stop it. So. What we do is, we've got our initial velocity is 60 miles per hour. I've converted that into feet per second here for the equation. So we've got 88 feet per second is equivalent to 60 miles an hour. Then we have to divide by our deceleration. So our deceleration rate, we're just going to use gravity, which is 32.2 feet per second squared. So that comes out to be 120 feet. So for a car to break um, at the with the same deceleration as gravity, horizontally, they will be able to stop in 120 feet if they are on a uh, level ground. Now in metric, uh, a common figure is 100 kilometers per hour to zero kilometers per hour. So I've done the same thing here. 100 kilometers per hour is basically equivalent to 27.7 repeating meters per second divided by gravity, 9.81 meters per second. And that comes out to about 39.3 meters. So for a car to stop at 1G of deceleration, it will stop in 39.3 meters from 100 kilometers per hour to zero. Now what does this mean? Well, let's go back to our 60 to zero. If you see that a car breaks from 60 to zero, like you go on Motor Trend or Inside Line and they give you a stat and they say, this car breaks from 60 to zero in 100 feet. Well, that tells you that it's braking at greater than 1G of deceleration, and that's really impressive. If the 60 to zero is greater than 120 feet, say 140 feet or 150 feet, well, that tells you that it's at less than 1G of braking. Now, what governs this? Well, it's, it's all governed by the force that your tires can apply to the ground, and that force is equal to mu, the frictional coefficient between the tires and the ground. So generally that number is around one, and then n, n being the weight of the car. Now, if you increase the weight of your car, you can, you can apply greater force, but you have a greater mass to slow down. So you want to increase the force down on the car, down force, but not increase the weight of the car. So if you put a spoiler on your car, for example, you're increasing the force down on your car, and then you can actually uh, have, apply a greater force when you brake. Also, you can have stickier tires. So if you have tires with a frictional coefficient of, say, 1.1, well, then you can probably stop at about 1.1 Gs. All right, so let's look and see, say the car did stop from 60 to 0 in 100 feet. Well, if you put 100 feet equal to 1 half the initial velocity, 60 miles per hour, rate 88 feet per second squared, you square that, divided by the acceleration, you solve for the acceleration, you get 38.72 feet per second squared. Now you want to find out how much this is in G, so you just divide by 32.2 and you get 1.2 G's. So a car that stops in 100 feet from 60 miles per hour is stopping with 1.2 G's. That's actually a really impressive number if, if it is possible, um, which it is, I'm just saying if, if it is possible for a certain car. So where does this equation here come from? Well we're going to start with the fundamental fundamental equation just for final velocity. So your final velocity is equal to your initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Now, in our case, we're going to zero, so our final velocity is going to be zero. And since we're decelerating, we're going to change this plus sign into a minus sign. So then you can move acceleration times time over to the other side, and you've got acceleration times time is equal to the initial. Well, we want to solve for time, so we'll say that time equals v initial over your acceleration. Alright, now we need an equation for distance in terms of time. So how can we figure out how long it takes, or how far something travels between two velocities? Well, you just take the average of those velocities, and then you divide them 
uh, you find the average of those velocities and then you multiply them by time. So our initial velocity is a certain number and our final velocity is zero. So the distance we travel is going to be equal to one half our initial velocity times time. And that will give us how far we've gone. Now plug in our equation for time into this equation and you'll get d equals one half v initial squared over acceleration. So that's where the equation comes from. And so now you might just want to go and look up some cars and see what their braking distances are and see how impressive uh, their, their braking is. And uh, leave any comments below of anything interesting you find.